Yeah, with um, with Ara helping out with uh, School of Hard Knocks, they have uh, put me through to an interview with here here at Fletcher's, of course, and um, I think it's to be uh, some type of admin within the company, and also there's some type of career path afterwards. So, yeah, big interview for me. I'm um, just I'm on the cusp of something. I, I think it could be a special, you know, career for me. So I'm just going to put my all into it, put my, you know, put my effort into it, and hope, hope it goes well. This is our offices. So you can see some of the stuff we're doing. The Ara boards there. Um, this is some of the, the pictures. That's my crane board. Okay. I think my hope is to land a career. You know, it's pretty hard to, you know, find something that that you could do long term. And, and so this is something I'm hoping that. I could be able to do short term and long term. Now he hasn't got the skills as we know you want. However, he's a big imposing man, right, who can actually walk around and help us on our quality. You know? He's from the School of Hard Knocks, so he is really keen to, you know, I'll show you that, but he's got no background. I think he could potentially build, build it out. He'd be potentially really good for you to, to he's pretty much um, a self-starter, so it's like show him once and away you'll go. Okay, so... Well, if you have a physicality about you and you're feeling good about yourself physically, it just grows, you know, and, but without that, um, that sort of spirituality or just feeling self-esteem and those sort of things, without that, the physical side, it, it's, it's really one-dimensional, to me anyway. You know, if you build on that spirit on the inside, you can move mountains with, with the spirit. Is this scaring you or is it interesting you? Or? Yeah, actually making me... Um, Excited? Yeah, a little bit more curious, I yeah. to be honest, yeah. Do you, think you know, you gain people's trust, then they'll, they'll do anything for you. So we're putting out the hand to help them, and it's up to them to take our hand, and away we go together. Well, the first time I came across TNL, I was a phone call just to let us know that there was two boys that um, were, were literally homeless and um, uh, were living um, out of their car um, in the car park, as, you know, the, which is a big issue here in Auckland, in New Zealand. And uh, I went to meet them, and they had been housed into a, a motel, which is in Papatoi, which is around the corner from where we are. And we'd met the mother, and the boys were in the room, and they didn't really want to come out and talk. I think they were just, curtains were closed, and yeah, it was, uh, wasn't, you know, there wasn't a lot of inspiration in there for them. Next week they were housed into a house in Mount Roscoe we were going to. We just had to pick them up and, and get them involved and they've been fantastic ever since really. Morning. Morning. Oh, hey boys. Who's that tea? Oh, he's going out the back. Oh, okay. You guys have a good day and... Um, See you this afternoon. Absolutely. Bye. 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 Living in one bag, that's what we were doing. That's all we had on us. All our things um, that we managed to save was put in storage, and what we had was a bag each of clothes, and that was it. I don't ever want to go back to that stage ever again, having to sleep in the van and wake up the next morning wondering whether they had to sleep or not, because, I mean, we're parking up in public areas we had to sleep with one eye open, really, just to be safe, feel safe. Um, but other than that, as long as we were all together, that's what, why we're still here today. Obviously, we've got a fantastic uh, guest with us today, so just like to welcome uh, Sonny into our little home. Boys, um, I'm Sunny, and uh, it's a pleasure and honour to be here with you boys today. Just uh, good to see the boys wanting to make a positive change, and I pretty much came from where you guys come from too. Um, grew up in a uh, housing commission's house, didn't have anything, but I knew from a young age I was pretty driven to uh, want to succeed and buy my mama a house. That was my goal. I was uh, never the smartest guy in school, but um, you know I knew what God gave me was the ability to play sport, so that was my that was my avenue to go hard at what I wanted to do and, you know, obviously try and get mama house and I was fortunate enough to do that a few years ago. So, bro, no matter where you come from, boys, it's, you know, there's always an opportunity, but you just got to be dedicated, you know? So it's good to see you boys here. Eh? 
It's week six now, um, and we're quickly approaching uh, game day. So it's really important now the focus that gets put into training uh, and the time that we spend preparing. Uh, if we don't prepare well, uh, we're not going to perform well come game day. Yeah. One, two, three. So how did you fall three um, stories? What happened? I was in town in Auckland CVD, and I went to go jump over a wall like a normal looking six foot wall. Yeah. But on the other on the on the other side of the wall was a car park, car park building, with just a straight three story drop in. So you didn't look over the thing before you jumped. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was diagnosed by the physiotherapist, and she's pretty much told me to cut out all running and jogging. I knew I wasn't going to be able to do much as far as the game playing the game was concerned, but I was holding out hope that I would be able to at least get some field time and throw throw a ball around for a little bit. But um, that's been pretty much taken off the table. So you can see here, see how he's running. He's got a bit of a weird gait style to him. When you have an injury that significant, it's not fun. You know, it's a big headache. You've got to really find the essence in there about why you want to get better and always stay focused on that to drive you through um, a lot of that tedious process of rehabilitating. So even if Rion can't play the game, what are all the different things and the lessons and the skills that he can learn through this journey? He can still be involved with a team and part of a team even though he doesn't take the field. What are we going to do about losing the big fella? Because he was a key playmaker. So Ryan's one of our young boys. He's got a few issues going on around home and around school. And so we've got his, got his carers, his youth workers here today. They're a bit surprised he's not here. Um, really disappointed he's not here to meet, you know, to meet Sonny. He looks a bit like Sonny, so you know we've been calling him Sonny Bill. But we just need to. Um, we need to try and bring him back into the fold and find out what's going on with his life, so we just need to get to the bottom of it. It's a critical time in his life, you know, 17, still at school, wanting to leave school. Interesting crew that he's hanging out with, probably not the most positive dudes in the world, so we need to try and get him back if we can. We're missing guys every day, so it's really hard to put the team together. Like last week, was a, I wasn't happy. It was a sad week for us because we had so many numbers down. We ended up playing touch one day. So for us, it's about getting the numbers and getting the training up. So from a pure rugby point of view, you know, we've got to start getting the numbers. We've got two weeks to the game. You know, got to get some consistency in the last two weeks to get a decent game of rugby out of Ryan, one of our boys, our Sunny Bill Williams doppelganger, he gets a, a lot of flack from the boys of uh, looking like a, a twin brother of Sonny Bill. He may come across very flat and probably a bit bored and disengaged when we're running through some of the drills um, and some of the, the training and the warming up and all that kind of stuff. But as soon as you put a ball in his hand and it's a bit of a competitive environment, his face lights up and he's um, you know, got a completely different attitude and energy to him. He could be um, one of the guys in the team that stands out as a leader. Uh, the boys already naturally um, gravitate towards him, uh, and that's kind of a sign of someone who the, the boys are naturally seeing as a leader and who they naturally want to follow. I don't know how much he realises this and how much impact he realises he can have from a leadership role and how much he can benefit the team. And because I, I think he's not necessarily aware of this, he's um, not stepping into that role. See, when you hit the back, keep your head up. Right? Keep looking straight. You duck your head. Yeah, it's better, bro. A couple of your boys, um, when you're going in, you're just putting your head down. So you're not actually seen looking at your target. So if you put your head down, you come through. If he steps, he could knock you out, you know? So you always want to keep your head up first. That's probably the first thing. And the second thing, a lot of you guys are, are, are diving for the big hit, but you're diving quite, quite far from the actual target. So you think if you dive from here, and then on point of contact, um, uh, you're not going to have that much power then if you put your, your leg right in close and drive through. Do you know what I mean? Because that's where you get all your power from, from, the, from your base, which is your leg. So just those two things, try and come in, slow your feet down or whatever, but just try and get your last foot nice and close 
keep your head up and drive through. See? What we're trying to teach the boys um, initially is, is some of the real basics. Um, head up and keep your eye on the target. You know, that's a, a real basic thing. You'll see poor technique, often the head's down, they're not, they don't have their eye focused on their target. So always head up, focused on your target. Strong contact and drive through. Um, those are some of the key basics um, that we're looking to, to establish with the boys. Um, all of the more advanced things will, will flow later on, but it's important that we get those basic fundamental um, skills um, embedded in the boys so it becomes second nature for them. Bro, one of the things that you should try and think of, think of is what kind of player you are. So for the bro, you know that you like the contact and that all you got to do is what JK said, you know, drop your body height. See, when you came in, you, you dropped your body out really good. And then you know if um, you're like you, you got good footwork, you use your footwork, you know? So understand what kind of player you are and then use your strengths, you know what I mean? Yeah. We, we want Awa and, and Joseph to be carriers, but, mate, you're a carrier too. So I need you to be, so when you don't think Awa's going to make it in there, you just step in and take it up from. Yeah. OK? Um, but I need you to run the lineouts. Cool with that? Yeah. Never been with around boys that much. Just always stayed home, done nothing. All the negative and bad stuff I've done. Just want to get rid of it. Just got to take it off and do something better and achieve keep this, this dog off my back that's chewing at me. Yeah, just really excited about T, you know. Um, when we come his brother's really awesome, you know, he's, he's fun. But, like, T today just stepped up into a leadership role. And then I actually underestimated him as well at the end. So I said, oh, mate, can you take over the, the line -outs? expecting him to sort of say, oh, nah. And he said, oh, yeah, I've got a few ideas. So, oh, quick, recover yourself. You know, encourage him to lead. Can you go away, write up some line outs for me? And yeah, yeah, sweet. You know, like, oh, I'm tingly, mate. Tingly. Love it. One. Yeah, nice. That's all right. No, better, better. Stay confident there. Yeah. Oh, stay up straight. Tone, stay confident, mate. That was yours. Well done. Awa. Awesome. Joseph, well done. Good work. What do you think, T? Good job, Tony. Good job. Stay dropping. Ready? Since I've been on the course, I've noticed they've come out of their shell. Before they were just bickering at each other because they were just in each other's faces 24 7, stuck in a little van or wherever we went to. They just didn't really feel like brotherhood. But now I see them being brothers. I just can see that they're like really happy, even though I know it's not going to last. But um, yeah, just hoping that. Yeah, that, that things happen for the better for them. Playing with my brother, oh, haven't done that in a while, eh? It's, it's me and Naz to, to get him back on the field with me, play along beside him. Yeah, I'm pretty proud. OK, we're going to nail this one, boys. Mindset, we're going to nail this one. Yeah, that's it. OK, let's do a one. Yeah, nice. You take over, Delray. Beautiful. Beautiful. Delray is one of the boys that naturally stand out as a leader. Um, he'll be the first to stand and speak on behalf of the group. He'll be the first that will um, acknowledge each and everyone that's in the room. He will have conversations with all of the boys um, and talk about a whole range of different issues, both on and off the field. Um, highly engaged all the qualities that you, you expect of a leader. So he's naturally assumed um, that leadership role of the team, and I think rightfully so. Um, he has a lot of strengths that he brings to the team. Um, he has the voice and the confidence, and that's important for a leader. What's up? He's just struggling to breathe. Yeah. No, I just have been migraines all week. All week? Is that from that knock you got last week? Yeah. Um, Mum was going to take me to see a doctor this week, but... Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, we need to get to the bottom of that, eh? Yeah. Because those pills don't work, so... Yeah. Um, I could... I can possibly make some phone calls, like, to... 
to Dr John Mayhew and get him possibly to help. We really want you to play, so we need to get it sorted. Too. Yeah. I haven't played since Danivik. And you're one of our big ball carriers, mate. So I need you out there. Hey. My hustle, boys. Nice. Boy. You don't need to be an All Black to be a positive role model, to have a good influence and to be a leader. Anybody can have those qualities. That's what we're looking to develop, and that's one of the, nice I guess, the responsibilities um, of this initial group of boys and what we're really looking for is that first group of role models um, that go through this journey and can be an advocate of the positive influence and the positive change that can come from it. These first group of boys will be, um, you know, the positive role models, especially those that can take learning from it, apply it well and start to shift their life in a positive way. Um, those will be the boys that will become role models for our, our next group coming through in future seasons. So a quantity surveyor is big in building, painting, anything to do with the industry of building. Uh, when you get taught something like that, your career uh, normally winds up between 60 and 150,000 a year. It's way up. You guys are in the big money machines as far as that <coughs> industry is concerned. So you've got an opportunity, and I want to say this about Vi. Vi was the first to send me his CV right at the start. He, he says, Henry, I sent my CV. Bing, there it was. He was the first guy to send me a CV. He's the first guy to pester me about helping him get a job. He's the first guy that went out and actually got job interviews for himself without me even talking about it. And it's no wonder that he's not the first guy to actually get a job. So to me, it just proves yeah. if you just go for it and, and, and don't worry about anybody else who says you can't do it, you're going to achieve it, you know? Yeah. Boom. 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 Joining this course was a part of, I guess, redeeming myself. I couldn't go on anymore, really, um, pretending like, like um, I could waste my time anymore. I needed to do something constructive and start rebuilding my life, I guess. And that's the main reason I realised now why I joined this programme, is to, you know, start rebuilding and start moving towards something new. At the house I grew up in, um, we grew up in a housing commission house. We had no wallpaper on the wall. So we used to think we were cool, scribble on the wall and that, you know, until dad sees us. But they lived, they slept in the lounge room. And us, um, my brother, my sisters had a room and me, and me and my brother had a room. So just seeing that, you know, growing up in that environment, um, I always, I don't know what it was, bro. I just always had the motivation, like, um, you know, I'm gonna, buy mama a flash house or, you know. That's why I trained so hard, because I always doubted that I could make it, you know, and I, I always had the dream of, oh, if, I, if I go over to Australia, there's more clubs there. Like, I was never the smartest guy at school, but I always had it like a drive inside me. Like, I'd see, I'd watch TV, and I, I remember watching TV and I seen some athletes that were eating pasta before a game, eating salad that week. Um, so I got my old man, asked him if he could make me some pasta before, you know, like I was, and this was, I was only 10. Mm -hmm. So I always had that drive, but it was, it was just to try and better my, my family for that, you know, and thank God that it, it all came to fruition in the end because, you know, sometimes um, when you chuck all your eggs in that basket, it doesn't pan out the way it does, but it did for me. So yeah, it's a tough one, but as long, I, I reckon as long as you're motivated and, you're, and you have that motivation to be successful, it doesn't matter what you're going to do, but you're going to be successful in life. Eh? So, yeah, you know, it's probably not the best thing school-wise, but I was always driven, just I was so focused, you know, like I, I'm not going to school today, I'll do some fitness, I'll do some speed, or I'll do some agility, or, you know, just things like that, always trying to learn. I've always thought, oh, man, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can play for the All Blacks. I don't know if I can reach this. I don't know if I can do that. But that's driven me to be at home and think, fuck, what's, what's, what's that dude doing? Mm. Oh, shit, that's it, you know, put some shoes on, go for a run or um, doing weights. I look over, that dude finished, I'm doing that, I said, right, I'll do this, you know, do a little bit extra. Do, it's just, I've always had that kill or be killed mentality in that, that respect because I've always doubted myself and I think that's a blessing. You know, I've turned that doubt into, all right, I've got to do my extras, got to do this, tick every box, you know what I mean? Tell me, we'll talk about, you got a whack in the head last week? Yeah. Did JK hit you or what happened? Mm -hmm. 
Um, <laughs> he's pretty violent sort of guy. When I tackled. Yep. Yeah. And can you remember that? No, because all I could remember was just getting up and my head was just pounding. We went through the ACC protocols. Good, yep. Took him off the field. Yep. Um, and then sort of that was it for the day. Yep. And how did you feel the next day? Um, pretty sore because um, my head just kept going off, you know. Yeah. If you were playing tomorrow, you know, with the headaches and things like that, we, we wouldn't let you play. But I think what we should do is, you know, catch up in a week or ten days' time and I'd be happy for you to do non-contact training at the moment. And then, obviously, the head injury, the headaches, that's going to gradually improve with time. And hopefully, if you, you know, pass all those tests, you'll be able to play on the, the 6th of October, you know. I think there's two things going on. I think the chest pain is, you know, due to your asthma, you know, yep. which has uh, not been treated for a while. And, of course, when you start running around, it hurts, you know, because you're not breathing as well as you can. Even listening to your chest now, you know, it's, it's wheezy, you know, that, like when you breathe out. Uh, and what happens when you start doing some exercise, you get what we call exercise-induced asthma, it makes it worse, especially if it's a cold, you know, miserable day, and then you start exercising. So uh, we can help you a lot with that. So yep. the medication which, you know, you were on in the past, we'll get you back on that. I'll talk to his mum. Yeah. His mum, mum is, uh, you know, he's yeah. a too. Yeah, I mean, he's someone, if you put some time into it, it'll be good, because mm. his chest pain is he's getting short of breath, you know. Mm. And, OK, he's not overly fit at the moment, but it is compounded by his yeah. asthma. Yeah, so right. if we get his asthma under control, then you can improve his fitness. Yeah, right. you rather than, at the moment, you're testing his asthma, you know, by training him. Yep. And um, he'll be a lot better with that. Yeah. Appreciate it, Doc. That's the pleasure. Once you, again, awesome. yeah, no good. Doc, mate, who's given up his time for us, which we really appreciate, because <laughs> some of these boys can't uh, yeah. get to the doctor and stuff. So yeah. Appreciate it, Doc. It's, it's, always, it's always easier good. than treating you, JK. So it's <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm way more complicated. <laughs> I can't believe that I was 16. I just can't believe it. You know? And T. Well, he's, you know, he's 70. He's only a year older, but the maturity level has just gone through the roof. Uh, in terms of teamwork and in terms of just the physicality of the game and, and being a part of the team, just they're really, just really nailing it, you know. The understanding where they fit in. I think, you know, all of the things that we do, whether it's a, whether it's a part of the uh, career development or whatever, or getting a job, everything is just building brick by brick their confidence and their money and the way they hold themselves. So, oh, I'm just... Yeah, you know, I'm proud to have been working with both of them, you know. Feels like an honour, you know. Get to run out and battle with this guy. You know, might not be the last time, but yeah. Brothers are always going to be there for each other, yeah. I'm extremely proud of them because of what they've achieved right now. I mean, they've come out of their shell. I'm extremely proud of how they are today. I'm, I'm extremely proud of them being happy, them spending more time with each other as brothers. I'm extremely happy for everything that Schools of Hard Knocks has done for them. For me, some of these guys are making that decision to change their lives, and that's the first thing. So at the end of it, my expectations are we're going to have a great game of football and it's going to be a fantastic moment, but that won't be the lasting stuff. For me, it'll be Vi getting a job and meeting him in 10 years' time and he's in a great space. Um, you know, the, our two young fellas, Awa and T, 16 and 17 years old, you know, left school, getting them into an apprenticeship or something like that and seeing them, seeing them back at School of Hard Knocks next year, talking to these other kids that are having difficulties. So really... This year is about building something special that will carry on. Are we getting there? We don't know, mate. Some, there's going to be some success. There's going to be some horrible failures. The positive person and thinks, sure, you know, everyone's going to get a job. It's all going to end up rosy. But the reality is, if we can get a few of these boys to change their lives, then you know we've had a good we've had a good run.